So the next is about the sequence comparison. When we say about sequence, it means uh, it can be list, it can be tuple, it can be string. Okay. So sequence define comparison operation based on the lexicographic order. So lexicographic is the alphabet order. Yeah, we know that the A, B, C, so A will have a lower value than C. It perform an element by element comparison until the first difference is found. So let's see this one. I have two lists. Okay, I have two lists. Let me just copy this one. So what is the result? Five less than five. So they, they will check one by one for every of this element. Okay. The result is true because because yeah, six is less than seven. Okay, so. This is because of the entry at index one. Okay. We want to perform the element by element comparison until the first difference is found. Five and five, it is the same element. Okay. So they will not consider that one. Six and seven, they are different. So they will check it. Okay. So the same with the other sequence comparison. Okay. We can use the equal, equal, not equal, lexicographically less than, okay. less than equal to, greater than, greater than equal to. We can have the operators for sets. Set and frozen sets support the following operators. So let's focus on the set. So we can check whether a value contains in the set or not. Let's see. I have uh, okay. maybe I can have S one, and let's see. It is one, two, and three. And then let's make S2, uh, 3, and 4, and 5. Okay. So, 1 in S1. True, it means there is an element 1 inside of the set 1 or S1. Okay, as you know, okay. the curly bracket. The curly bracket represents the set. Yeah. And it can be also for dictionary. But we have only one value, so it is set. In, not in. I guess you know already. We can have also equal sign, not equivalent. Okay. And we can also have the subset. Proper subset, superset, proper superset. So if I have like S3 equals to 1 comma 2. So S3 is subset of S1.
This means subset. S3 is the element of 1 and 2. And S1, we are, have the element 1, 2, and 3. So 1 and 2 is the subset of S1. S1 is the superset of S3. Okay. We call this is subset. And we call this is superset. Okay. So we have the proper subset, we have proper superset. Okay. So it means yeah, the value are yeah, inside of the other set. Okay. We can have the union, intersection, and then minus, it is the set element in S1, but not in S2. And the set of elements in precisely one of S1 or S2. So let's see. I want to know the... S1, vertical line, S2. We call this is union. So S1 contain 1, 2, and 3. 1, 2, and 3. S2 contain 3, 4, and 5. It means when I do the union, I will combine for every element. And if I have the same element of them, then I will just make it S1. Okay. So 3 is in S1 and 3 is in S2. So it will be included as the union. I can also see the intersection. Is there any intersection between the two? Yes. It means the element three exists in S1 and element three also exists in S2. So I want to know what is the element that exists in S2 but not in S1. The element in S2, but not in S1. So we have 4 and 5. Because 3 exists in S1. If I want to check the element that are not available on both S1 and S2. So 1 and 2 exist in S1, 4 and 5 exist in S2, but 3 is available in both sets. So I want just to check the unique element between S1 and S2. Okay. Okay, so the precisely one, it means the unique element. So this operator is for the set. Although you can use also for list, but this is the definition for that. We have operators for the dictionary. The idea is the same. With the sequence operator, we just call the dictionary name and then 
we can specify in the square bracket and when we have the square bracket it means we can specify a particular element in this case we want to know the key okay and when we call the key we will get the value so uh, let's say i have the dd for example i have the i don't know maybe kr equals to korea and then uh ch equal to china okay so if i call dd AR, then I will get Korean. I can also uh, let's say I want to reset the value, so maybe I want to update South Korean. So if I call again D D A R, it becomes South Korea. So the value will be updated. Okay. And then I can also remove. Okay. Del it means delay. Key in D. So I can check. K R in dd so it is true let's say i want to delete dd see it is it right where delete key okay so i want to delete see it so when i check the dd then it remains only one then the element has been deleted Equivalent, not equivalent means yeah, you have two dictionary and you want to check whether the two are same or not. Operator precedence. When we have this kind of precedence, it means we know the order. What is the most important and what is the least important? So Python have this kind of operator precedence. The first is the access, and then next is the function call, and then the highest level is exponentiation. After exponentiation, there is a unary operator. Unary operator means plus it means the positive number negative it is the negative number okay. multiplication or division we have <coughs> multiply divide integer division modulus and then addition subtraction plus minus bitwise it is the machine language okay. and then the comparison so the mathematical operators it will be the first and after we do the mathematical operation then they will do the other kind of operations like the is is not in not in okay. and this kind of comparison it will be later so the first will be those kind of assignment and mathematical operators and then the other is the logical or the sequence operators Okay, uh, I will continue.
So today there will be a learning chat okay, at the end of this class. And okay, before I start this one. Okay, when we learn the Python, uh, there is a kind of structure. Okay. What you learn from the first time until the yeah, so the first Python, it is only just a statement, okay, one line statement. But we can use some control structures. The control structure means yeah, we can use some control flow and there should be a colon character. Colon character means this is colon. It's used to delimit the beginning of a block that acts as a body for control structure. So if the body can be stated as a single executable statement, it can technically place on the same line to the right of the column. Okay, we will check this one. However, a body is more typically typeset as an indented block. It will start on the line following the column. And Python relies on the indentation level to design it the extent of that block of the code or any nested blocks of code within. For example, this one. If, for if, you will have the condition and then you will need column at the end of the statement. And then you will need the indentation block. We call it, this is indentation. So there's, there are three types of condition. We can have if and then. So this is if and then. We can have also if and then and else as the last part. Or we can have the nested if. So if inside another if. We call it the L if. Okay. Now let's see. Let me just make this one program structure. If uh, I have one less than two, okay, print true. So I have a condition which is one less than two, and then it will be in the parenthesis, and I need to give column. For the statement, after this condition, it should be in the indentation. If you run this one, then it will give you true. But if you don't give indentation, if you like this one, then it will be error. Expected an indented block. If you do this one, this is okay. But it is only valid for only one line. Okay. If you have multiple lines, let's say print true. Print one is less than two. Because you have multiple lines, then you need to make the indented block. Okay. So for the if, you can have if uh, one less than two, print true, else print 
false. So the condition here, it will be ended with the column, and then you will make the statement if it is true. Else, and then you will be you will use also column to end this statement, and then we will do some statement when the condition is false. So if the condition is true, okay, this is true. But if I change this one, if the condition is false, then it will print false. So let's say if I have the if inside of if. A equals to five. As B equals to six. Okay. So if A less than B, then print A smaller than B. So if it is true, then yeah, A smaller than B. But else if we need to have another condition. Let's say A is greater than B. Then print A greater than B. A is smaller than B. A is greater than B. And then I have the last one. Else, maybe I can say print. A is equal to B. So there are three kind of conditions. If the A less than B is true, of course, it is A is smaller than B. If it is not true, then I will check. If A is higher than B, then A is greater than B. If not, then A equals to B. So if I run this one, I know that A equals to 5, B equals to 6. So 5 is smaller than 6. Okay. What if I change 5 and 5? Then the condition will give you A is equal to B. Okay. So this is the meaning by the multiple uh, in nested if, if inside another if. And you can have many LEs. Okay. While loop. Uh, we have the while loop. We have the for loop. Okay. So let's see one by one. Uh, I can use the for loop first. So see, I have the one, three, five, four, five, six, seven, nine. Okay, any value it will be okay. So I want to check for every element in C. Okay, so I can define any variable. Now I will make I. And then I want to know if I in the C. C is a list. So I can print I. I will print all the elements of C. Okay. I can know the length of the C. It means I know we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I know C has seven elements. Okay. So using this 
uh, length i can create while loop for example i will make i equals to zero while uh, i is less than length c then i will print c index i and then i equals to i plus one so i will make index i the starting value is zero and then i will check if the index i is less than the length of the list if it is true then i will print the c this is the list at the index i what is i i is zero so i will print c index zero after i print this one i will be added by one then i become one one is less than seven yes so we print index one i will be added by one now becomes two two less than seven yes then it will go loop until seven until i equals seven seven less than seven no then finish so you can get the same result as two as the for loop okay for loop and one So the while loop is we have the condition. If the condition is true, then we will execute the body. For for loop, for any element in iterable, iterable means something that you want to iterate. You can use list or there will be another function. We will check later. Yeah. So we can have the index for the loop. For example, like this one. Okay, let me follow this. Okay, based on this code, can you figure out the result? What is this code? We have data. One, five, two, three, six, seven, nine, seven. We have big index equal to zero. And then J in range length data. So I will do loop from zero until the length of the data. And then if data J is greater than data index big index equal j and you guess what is this code for okay let's see together so data equals to one comma five comma two comma three comma six comma nine comma seven big index equals to zero for j in range length the data <clears throat> and then if the data j is higher than data in the big index then pick index equals to j okay
So what is this code for? We want to compare for every element in the data with a particular index. In this case, I want to check whether the data in J is greater than the data in the big index. If the data is bigger, then let's update the index, big index. So it means I want to get the maximum value. Okay. I will run this. Now I will print the data in the big index. So the data in the big index is 9. And I can check the big index is 5. The big index starts with 0. So it will compare for every element. Okay. Data J is less than data 0. Data 0 is higher than data 0. No. Then it will go to the next 5. 5 is higher than data 0. Yes. So it will update the big index. So the big index now becomes the J. And then next, 2. Data J, which is 2, is higher than data big index. 2 is higher than 5? No. And then 3 is higher than 5? No. 6 is higher than 5? Yes. So we will update the index. 9 is higher than 6? Yes. So it will update the index. 7 is higher than 9? No. Then stop. So we will get the big index. And when you call the big index into the list data, then you will get the value. Okay. In Python, we have break and continue. So if you learn the computer programming in Java, we also have the break and continue. Break statement, it will immediately terminate while or for loop when executed within its body. Continue, it causes the current iteration of loop body to stop, but with subsequent passes of the loop proceeding as expected. So let's see. If you example this one. We have the data. It is one, two, three, four, five. And then I would like to check whether the number for any number in the data, it is in the list. Okay. You need to check if number equals to three and three. Break means stop. So you can see yeah, if you, what is the problem here? Indented block. After the if, it should be inside. Okay. Oh, I think I need to print. Okay, to see the result. Or if you want to see the result clearly, you need to print this one. So one, two, and three. Because the number is three, then stop. Okay. So I can change this one with the continue. Okay. Okay. 
I can change this one with continue. So <clears throat> it will keep until the last one. Okay. Because we print first, maybe we cannot see what is the meaning by this one. We can put the print after this. If you put after this, you can see the difference. Okay. Three is not printed. So when the number equals to one, is it equal to three? No. Then you will print. When the number equals to two, the number equals to three? No. Then it will print. The number equals to three? Yes. Because it equals to three, continue. Continue means we will go to the next element. So it will go to four. And then we will go check until the last element which is one so that's the difference between brick and continue okay. so you can check again if you change this one to brick so you will see only one and two when it equals to three then it stops it will not continue to the remaining elements Function. So function, it should use def, okay. and you need to specify the name of the function. Okay, the name of the function, and then you need to call the function. A function can be defined without and with parameters. And the number of parameters can be more than one. So this is a function without parameter. This is a function with one parameter. So I can make def display. Let's say print. So I can call display. So when I call the function display, it will print up. I can make function with one parameter, for example, def display character. Okay. Print the character. So I can display what is the character for example i want to print half so this parameter it will be the same with this input so i give the input half so this will go to this character or this variable and the function know that we need to print that variable So the result will be if you change this one to soul, it will print soul. If you print, if you change this one to youngin, then it will print youngin. Okay. Okay, I guess I need more time to discuss this one. Let me stop here and now let's go to the loading check. Okay.